Complications after bariatric surgery are, are things that everybody fears. It's things we fear as surgeons, and there are things that do occur. Um, we're, we have imperfect people operating on imperfect bodies. It's hard to hit a thousand with that lineup. Uh, the thing about complications is, is uh, we do everything we can to control the frequency of these complications. They never go away, but we do what we can to push the frequency of these complications as close to zero as we can, but we just can't seem to get to zero. Um, the main groups of complications are, uh, we can sort of divide them into early and late. Uh, early uh, tends to be related to the operation. Uh, can be complications related to the anesthetic, uh, complications related to being in the hospital. Um, the main uh, things that we worry about during the hospitalization are blood clots and pneumonias, and these are related to uh, having a general anesthetic and being in bed. And the key to controlling this risk is to get out of bed, and it's something we're very interested in, something we, we insist on and will help you do. Uh, to get out of bed to control the risks of blood clots and pneumonias. Um, another uh, big part of early risks are leaks. Uh, whenever we operate on the intestinal tract, um, an area can, that we close off, that we hooked back together, can fail and cause a leak. Um, we try to, again, push this risk as close to zero, but, but we, uh, we haven't been able to reach zero yet. Uh, the uh, thing about leaks is they usually occur early. They usually, we usually find them before you go home. Very uncommon to find one after somebody's been discharged from the hospital. And the thing about leaks is that uh, what's leaking on the inside is the contents of the intestine and it has all the bacteria from the intestine, uh, all the bacteria from the mouth now free in the belly cavity, so it can cause life-threatening infections. And uh, what we notice on patients who uh, do show signs of leak is that uh, there's some very early soft signs, and those are the things that we're looking for. Uh, it's like everybody's getting better and this one's not getting better, or everybody's smiling and this one's not smiling, or everybody's walking fast in the hallway and this one's walking slow. And that's when we want to find it, and x-rays can help us find it, but a lot of times it's just clinical suspicion. And the thing we know about leaks is that the earlier we find it, the earlier we fix it, the better you do. The more delay there is between the onset of the leak and us getting after it, the more infectious complications we get and the longer uh, uh, fight we have to do to get you back to good health. Um, so leaks are, are, are part of the early complications. Uh, later complications, uh, the main thing we think about is strictures, which is an abnormal narrowing of something that's been put together, or obstructions where um, the path of food moving through the intestinal tract is blocked by a twist, a kink, some scar tissue. And uh, the thing that makes us think about these is the patient's been doing well, able to eat, feeling comfortable, and now all of a sudden food feels bad or food won't stay down, or they're having crampy abdominal pain as the intestine is trying to move uh, food against this obstruction. And these are things that we need to hear about. Uh, if you're doing good, now all of a sudden you're not good, doing good. Food doesn't feel good. Food won't stay down. Uh, as long as you're chewing good and eating slowly and stopping before you're over full, um, if food doesn't feel good, something's wrong that we need to know about. Another part of the long-term complications are nutritional. Um, and with somebody that is going to undergo this degree of weight loss over this period of time, uh, we need some nutritional supervision. Uh, we talk about you know, ways to change your diet, to uh, ways to change the way you eat, uh, to, for example, encouraging you to eat the protein course first while there's still room uh, before anything else to try to ensure that you get an adequate amount of protein. Uh, taking a good vitamin supplement usually just a good over-the-counter multivitamin. We're trying to encourage most people to take extra B12. Uh, there's an under the tongue, melts under your tongue crystalline B12 that seems to be working out pretty good, and uh, extra calcium. But these are the things that we'll talk about and uh, work with our nutritional therapist as you're going through the first couple of years. And uh, another uh, main complication that we deal with a lot is uh, weight loss failure. 
And weight loss failure is a very complicated subject on its own, uh, something we can talk about for hours. Uh, most patients do great, and a small percentage of the patients struggle, and they struggle achieving their weight loss goals. And sometimes it's behavioral things, sometimes there's anatomical things related to the operation. Uh, and uh, the, these are complicated things that, uh, that we can talk about, look at, and try to help.